people are awesome. I truly believe this. Isn't it so impressive what a person can achieve in sports, art, or science? Individually, some of us can shine massively. Yet it is when we combine talents and strength as a collective that we truly excel as human beings. Together, we can do wonders. But our species is certainly not the only one on this earth. There are more than 2 million species currently known to science. What makes us the chosen one? Why is Homo sapiens capable of the extraordinary when we are not the strongest, the fastest, or the cutest? Introducing the brain, a soft three pound organ protected by the tough skull made up of 100 billion neurons connected by 10 trillion synapses that produces 17 quadrillion electric signals every day. A non-stopping machine that defines, as far as we know, what we do and who we are. All things humanity has ever done right started as an idea in a human brain. And likewise, everything that we have ever done wrong can be traced back to a human brain as well. Our brain is responsible for the good and the bad that we bring to Earth. Wouldn't it be great then if we could figure out how it works, how we make decisions and create memories, what intelligence and consciousness are? Could we translate brain understanding into higher empathy and compassion for others? Could we explain the mind and cure mental illness and neurodegeneration? Yes, we could. We should and we must. And science is moving there, slowly but consistently. But are there ways to go faster? Well, if we were to close the gaps in the playing field of neuroscience, the ones that slow and hamper brain research, we could do something about it and accelerate our journey to the mind. Today, I want to talk about one gap that I care about deeply the worldwide disparity in neuroscience education and share ideas about how to bridge this fundamental gap. In my opinion, ideas worth spreading far and wide. Let me explain. To advance brain research, a proven approach takes advantage of three main strategies. The first strategy is the study of special human brains and minds. Throughout history, major breakthroughs in neuroscience follow the identification and proper study of individuals with special brains or minds, often, but not always, patients or accident victims. Phineas Gage, struck through the skull by an iron rod launched in an accidental explosion, lost much of his prefrontal cortex and his persona with it. His brain helped us recognize the crucial role that the prefrontal cortex plays in judgment, decision-making, social behavior, and personality. Henry Molison, likely the most studied individual in the history of neuroscience, willingly offered himself for a 50-year study of a severe memory impairment. Work with HM established fundamental principles about how memory functions are organized in the brain. Studying the brain of Louis Leborn, aka Tan, helped us identify brain regions which produce human language. While studying August Dieter's brain helped to single out proteins involved in Alzheimer's disease. Many crucial aspects of the human mind in both the healthy and the mentally ill have been discovered through study of special brains like this. To gather basic neuroscientific knowledge, however, another route has proven to be even more effective. This second strategy involved researching champion animal species. Species whose members are numero uno in specific behaviors, vertebrates and invertebrates. Yes, even the study of bug brains get us closer to understanding the human mind. Take the Bain squid, master of underwater escape response, that has evolved a giant neuronal axon of up to 1.5 millimeters in diameter to improve reaction speed. This giant axon allows researchers to insert electrodes inside the lumen, leading to the molecular explanation of the electrical signals that neurons use to communicate. The mustache bat, a skillful navigator of the night skies, 
evolutionarily developed one of the most sophisticated auditory systems on the planet, with neurons specialized in processing calls and echoes to estimate target distance. When exploring whether this neural system was ingrained in the animals since birth, we found that the auditory cortex of newborn bats is in fact pre-wired for echolocation. This parallels findings in the hearing capabilities of human infants. Many other champion species in the wild have helped us to understand the brain, the leash to describe motor patterns generators, the hamster to unravel the brain's biological clock, and the California sea hare to explain the synaptic mechanisms of memory storage, to name a few. And yet, there is another final strategy used to advance brain research, the gathering of human talent into neuroscience labs. When we combine human ingenuity with passion and technology, we have an uncannily potent strategy. Talent enables science to answer very complex questions about the inner workings of the brain. Using this strategy, scientists have shaped a few animal species such as the rat, the fruit fly, and the roundworm into convenient animal models for neuroscience. We know in great depth their genome, anatomy, physiology, and behavior, which makes brain research much easier. The identification of hippocampal play cells that help us navigate a 3D world, the discovery of genes that trigger Parkinson's disease-like motor disorders, and the mapping of all the neural connections in a whole brain were all made possible because of neuroscience labs studying these animal models. These three strategies accelerate the deciphering of the human neural code, and it's likely for this reason that they have been extensively implemented in countries with large-scale neuroscience initiative. These leading countries rightly devote billions of dollars to brain research. Let's put them on a map and name them BARC for brain aware and ready countries. Such strategic and coordinated effort is excellent news, right? The bad news, however, is that if this same map is taken as a proxy for neuroscience education, we could see that the map is somehow broken. There is a clear gap in this playing field. And broken neuroscience education equals mediocre and slow brain research. To give you an idea, if we know that all bark combined makes up only about three eighths of the world's population, a poor neuroscience education will miss a chance to find special human brains and minds among the other five billion people. Individuals who don't feel pain or fear, or can't remember every episode of their life, or make it with minimum sleep, or age much slower than the rest of us. Each one is an opportunity to learn something new about the human brain, but they are currently being lost amongst the larger population. Now, let's have a look at biodiversity and place on the map the top 20 mega diverse countries. Clearly, most animal species live in areas outside the bark region. The more species we carefully study, the higher the probability to find new models of sensory processing, new molecules for neuropharmacology, new genes to explore the causes of mental illness. But the lack of local neuroscience education may neglect the study of such valuable species. As for strategy three, we don't have a world map of talent, but we all know that talent can be found everywhere. High caliber athletes, entrepreneurs, artists are born in every corner of the world. The same applies to scientists, but many currently lack the resources and the neuroscience education they need to succeed. We need to bridge the gap in neuroscience education and foster brain research everywhere. Among other advantages, that will accelerate us towards cures and other treatments of the many brain disorders that take a huge toll on humanity every day. Thankfully, many organizations are succeeding at advancing neuroscience education. Today, I want to propose a toast to highlight the two that have made the biggest impact in my own life and in the life of many of my neuroscience students. First, I wish to recognize the International Brain Research Organization. IBRO supports neuroscience education all over the world. For students that bring hard work, real interest, and a thirst for brain knowledge to the IBRO trainings, there is a chance to be selected to attend local, regional, and leading edge international schools. 
opportunities that will leave an indelible delight in your career. And second, I wish to honor the Alexander for Humboldt Foundation, an organization that sponsors researchers regardless of their discipline and nationality. The research on Cuban bats that I mentioned before was supported by the Humboldt Foundation. They strategically support their alumni during their entire life. Once a Humboldtian, always a Humboldtian. But what can we do as individuals to bridge the gap in neuroscience education? One option I had was to take part in the educational programs of IBRO, the International Society for Neurothology and the Humboldt Foundation. With their support, we organize local and regional schools. But if you love teaching neuroscience and the stars align, you could get invited to teach a prestigious worldwide initiative. I will never forget that day in 2016 when I received the invitation to join the visiting lecture team program, a real privilege. BLTP courses offer experiment-based lectures about modern principles of basic neuroscience. Each course is a life-changing experience for students and faculty, and everybody learns a lot. I vividly remember our course in Nigeria, a personal opportunity to discover how much we all share. Coming from across the Atlantic Ocean, I was not expecting to have so much in common with my students from Africa. Food, music, and even jokes. Maybe it was the subtle workings of evolution, but on that first course in Africa, I had the feeling that I was coming back home after a long journey. And every course has been a first-hand confirmation that talent and opportunities for good science occur everywhere on the planet. The VLTP, which I knew first as a student and then as faculty, was a highly effective and inexpensive IBRO program. And I say was because it might come to an end after 27 years of existence. Another sad memory of what the world lost during the COVID-19 pandemic if it doesn't get reinstated. But that brings me to the second option we have as individuals, the personal commitment to bridging gaps by all available means. Today, we have access to platforms to connect with people across the planet. YouTube, for example, arguably a free and inclusive platform is one huge opportunity to step up on a podium and share our passion and knowledge with the world. So, last year I jumped, and after 25 years of exciting research on the evolutionary arms race of bats and moths, I moved to online education. Competitive, innovative, democratic, rewarding, all characteristics of the online space. With every video, there is a chance to motivate and educate one more student, one more individual that will come to realize that when you have education, you can be broke but not poor. It is invigorating to discover more and more educators taking to the social networks to participate in online training and capacity building. Hundreds are engaging the younger generations in the sciences of the brain and therefore bridging the gap in neuroscience education. And this trend will definitely continue. So we should feel optimistic about the future of the world's brain literacy. Remember, when we work collectively towards one common goal, Miracles happen. Every summer, I teach behavioral neuroscience to excellent students at Cornell University. When they ask me why the 21st century has been called the century of the brain, I tell them this, that it is because our hope is to break the neural code before the century is over. I wish I could be there on December 31st, 2099, to see if humanity did it. If we came together, to bridge the gap in neuroscience education and learn so much about our brains that we solve mental illness, redefine aging, increase compassion and happiness, accomplish peace and clean up the planet, all within the powers of our brain. Because I won't be there, I feel free to imagine any scenario that fits my will and my faith. I choose to believe that we made it all. I choose to believe that with the end of the century comes a moment to acknowledge that people are awesome.